Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 14, and I'm going to discuss the product rules for gradient, divergence, and curl. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. So the previous videos which are relevant to this are number 7, where I discussed the gradient, number 12, where I discussed the divergence, and number 13, where I discussed the curl. Now, the general topic of product rules for the uh, grad div and curl are very important. Why? Because without those you can't derive Maxwell's equations. And you find that a lot of the, uh, the manipulations that are done in electromagnetism or electrodynamics basically uh, they rely on all of the, these product rules. So there's something which you should definitely understand and if you don't you'll, you'll, you'll look back at some stage and go well where, where did how did this formula or such a formula come about? And it all comes down to these product rules. So if we're talking about ordinary derivatives, the following are the various operations you can do. You can have the sum, the derivative of a sum, which is simply the uh, the sum of the derivatives. You can multiply a, we'll say a function by a constant and take its derivative. In this case, it's the same as multiplying the uh, the derivative by the constant. We can take the derivative of a product, and that is simply the product rule for ordinary derivatives. Or we can take the quotient and have the quotient rule for ordinary derivatives. So there are analogous formulas for the product rules for grad, div, and curl. But before I do those, just we should look at the, some of the following here. Okay. So what we have here is that if we take the gradient of a sum, we get the sum of the gradients. If we take the divergence of a sum, we get the sum of the divergences. If we take the curl of a sum, we get the sum of the curls. And finally, there are three more I'd like to show you. So if we take the gradient of, multi we'll say f is the function which we're going to take the gradient of, but we're going to multiply f by a scalar. It's the same as multiplying the gradient of f by the scalar. Similarly, if we take the divergence of a vector, a, multiplied by a constant k, it's the same as multiplying the scalar k by the divergence itself, and a similar rule follows with the curls. Unfortunately, however, the product and quotient rules for grad, div, and curl are nowhere near as straightforward. And the reason that they're nowhere near as straightforward is because there are two ways you can construct a scalar as the product of two functions. You can construct, uh, excuse me, you can construct a scalar if you multiply two scalar functions. Another way of making a scalar is if you take the dot product between two vectors. That will also give you a scalar. Now, in terms of grad div and curl, that may, that means, for example, if you take the divergence of a vector, you're going to get a scalar. So there are two ways of making a scalar. Um, in general, okay. So that means there, it's going to be that bit more difficult for us to come up with our product and quotient rules. Also, there are two ways to make a vector. You could multiply your vector a by a scalar, let's say f, and that that will give you a vector. Or what you could do is you could take the cross product. So let's say the cross product of vectors a and b is also going to give you a vector. So you can see where we're going here. That if we take the curl of a vector a, we're also going to get back a vector. So just this will make the constructing the product and quotient rules that bit more difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write them down now, all of the quotient rules and the product rules, and I will uh, in the coming videos I will prove them all. So if you're looking at gradients, there are two product rules. You can take the gradient of two scalar functions f and g, and you're simply going to get f times the gradient of g plus g times the gradient of f. Okay. Also, you can take the gradient of the dot product of a and b, two vector functions a and b. Now this one looks pretty horrible. It's, the, it's going to be written as follows. OK, 
Okay, so you can see it start. That looks that looks pretty horrible. So there are the two, there are the two uh, product rules for gradients. If you look at the product rules for divergences, then we're going to get. If we take the divergence of the vector a multiplied by a scalar f, we're going to get the scalar f outside of the divergence of a, and we're also going to get a outside of the gradient of f. Okay. And if we take the divergence of the curl of vectors a and b, what we're going to get is b dot the curl of a minus a dot the curl of b, like that. And finally, we're also going to have two for, for the curls. So if we look at the curls, we're going to have, if we take the curl of our vector a multiplied by a scalar f, we're going to get this function f outside of the curl of a minus a outside of the gradient of f. And the last one is the most complicated looking. So if we take the curl we take the curl of the curl, or the curl of the, uh, not the curl of the curl, excuse me, if you take the curl of the cross product of A and B, you have this, this, plus Now, before I continue, you might look at this and say, well, look, it's all well and good, but I guarantee you that these are very important and you will be using them for fact when you're, dis when you're discussing Maxwell's, Maxwell's equations and earlier. Now, in with this, there are three quotient rules. So you're going to have, if you take the gradient, or if you take the gradient of the quotient of two scalar functions, you're going to get the following as you would expect. Okay, if you take the divergence of a vector divided by a scalar g, what you're going to get is g outside of the divergence of a minus a dot the gradient of g. It's a vector of course and divided by g squared. And finally, if you take the curl of our vector function a divided by a scalar g, we're going to get, as you would expect, g outside of the curl of a. Uh, we're going to have to add to that a crossed with the gradient of g, and we need to divide that all by g squared. Okay, and there the pro excuse me, the, the product and quotient rules. Now, I will be referring to these regularly throughout my tutorial series. So for that reason, I'm going to number them. And this is the numbering here is going to be the numbering I will prove them in. So, the, I'm going to call this one number 1. I'm going to call this one number 2. I'm going to call this one number 3. I'm going to call, where is it here, this one here, number four, and number five is going to be this one, and this one of course is going to be number six. Similarly, my quotient rules, I'm actually going to name them, or number them just as they are there, one, two, and three. Very straightforward. Okay, now, you might say, well, why have I numbered them like that? Surely the, better, the best way to number them uh, the, the product rules is as they are, namely grad, div, curl. The reason I've done them this way is because of their, actual, their, their, their difficulty. So this is the easiest one to prove, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6. So that's the way I'm going to do that. So in the next video, I'm going to basically just go through a lot of the, let's say like a dot, um, a dot the, the, uh, the nabla, or 
uh, the curl of A or whatever I'm going to do to show you how to do all of those very quickly and then in the, the following videos from that I will prove each of these individually. So thanks for watching, please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel and you might also visit universityphysicstutorials.com. Thanks.